All right, another important concept we need to define for solid mechanics is Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio can be defined as the deformation perpendicular to the loading direction to that in the loading direction. So we've been describing so far in this chapter that you could take a box like this, right? And if I squeeze on it, then it might deform to a different shape and it might look like this, you know, exaggerated. So the ratio of how much it deforms by expanding outwards versus going down, right? That is going to give us the Poisson's ratio. So here's how we define it. Poisson's ratio, they use the letter nu, it looks like the letter V in Greek, is defined like this. It's the negative value of the strain in the x direction. Let's assume that we're loading in the z direction, right? So this is x and z, right? So if you're loading it in the z direction, you take the strain in the x direction and you divide it by the strain in z direction, negative of that. That makes it a positive number, right? Or have we done this in y, right? So if this was our three dimensions, x, y, z, you could do the same thing, okay? So if the strain is the same in the x and the y directions, then it's isotropic. What are some typical values for Poisson's ratio? Well, if you have a completely isotropic material, remember, that means that there's no dimensionality uh, preference in terms of strain. Your material is just as likely to strain the same amount in all three of its directions. So if you pulled on it in this direction, pulled on it up and down, pulled on it from the front and the back, you'd get the exact same response if it's isotropic. Then you can expect a... Uh, Poisson's ratio value of 0 0.25. If there's no volume change at all, then it would go all the way up to 0 0.5. But most materials are typically in between there. Uh, it's very common for Poisson's ratio to be something like 0.25 to 0.35. There are some notable exceptions. If you take cork, for example, or probably styrofoam too, where there's lots of porosity and you compress it, it's not likely to bulge out very much because the material can just collapse in and fill those voids. And so it doesn't need to expand outwards to conserve volume, right? Um, other materials like rubber, if you squeeze a rubber, you know, like a rubber mat when you step on it, it bulges out um, perfectly out the side. It's total volume conservation, right? And so it goes all the way up to Poisson's ratio of almost 0 0.5, okay? Now for isotropic materials, we have a really great relationship we can use. It's as follows. E, that's our Young's modulus, is equal to 2 times G, where G is our shear modulus, multiplied by the quantity of 1 plus Poisson's ratio. So this is really great because let's say that um, measuring shear modulus is, is hard to do, but you know you have an isotropic material. What you can do is you can measure Young's modulus easily and Poisson's ratio easily, and you could calculate shear modulus, or vice versa. If you wanted to calculate uh, Poisson's ratio. You have a relationship that can do that. Uh, keep in mind that shear modulus is typically much smaller than Young's, uh, Young's modulus. Or in other words, it's, it's harder to pull things in tension. It's, you can get them to deform much easier if you shear them, right?